There we go. Looking good. <clears throat> All right. Here it is, folks. The final game in the Broken Sword series. Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse. Welcome, everyone, to Mortality Monday. I am your host, I guess, Papaya Chemist. And uh, I've been playing through the Broken Sword series for the first time in my life. And we're finally here, we're at the end of the game, we're at the end of the series, the beginning of the end, the last game. It's been, uh, it's been a long, crazy ride. And there may just be one more, uh, length of craziness <laughs> in store for us. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Let's go! Let's get started. Broken Sword 5, here we go. Woo! New game! Uh, if you have not played a point-and-click adventure game before, then we recommend that you play the short tutorial section. I have played about a million point-and-click adventure games, but you know what? Let's play the tutorial anyway. Just for funsies. Yes. Hello and welcome! Firstly, we'd like to show you how to discover and interact with interesting things in the environment, in this case a humble red arrow. Move the mouse port pointer to the red arrow tip and an animated magnifying glass will appear. Click the left mouse button to interact with it. Hey, good evening, Bee Dragon, and good evening, Walter World Games. There it is. Target. Cool. Well done. That's how you discover and interact with hotspots. Hotspots mark interesting things in the environment with which you can interact. Continue. To get George to walk to the arrow, left-click on the floor at that point. There's George! There he is! Hey, Mr. Gel! Good job, George. Excellent. That's how you get a character to walk to where you want them to go. This game also has controller support, I understand. But, eh, let's just play with a mouse and keyboard. Why not? See the torch that had magically appeared? Now get George to pick it up by moving the mouse pointer over the torch hotspot and left-clicking when the pointer changes to an animated pickup icon. Torch, also known as a flashlight. Yoink. Well done, you just picked up the torch. Things that you pick up get stored in your inventory. Click the bag icon at the bottom left of the screen to see all the objects in your inventory. There it is. This is your inventory. The only thing that George is carrying is a torch. Now examine the torch by moving your mouse pointer, mouse pointer over it and clicking the right mouse button. You can examine any hotspot in the game by right clicking it. It's the fine looking torch that you just picked up. Now look for and pick up the batteries that have magically appeared in the scene. Oh, uh, yes, I can do that. Please, I, I don't, don't worry about being that guy. I appreciate being that guy, people being that guy, because I want to know when my audio levels are, are wonky. Uh, let's see, my mic audio is as high as it'll go, but let's see if I can scooch it up a little more. Can I do that? Oops, no, don't mute it. <laughs> That's not what I want. Oh, here we go, okay. Um, advanced properties. Go do 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 do. Bump it up to like. Let's try one hundred and twenty percent. Let's see if uh, if that's better at all. Let me know if that's any better, or if I need to bump it up more or less. 
Also belatedly, hello, over solo. Yeah. Broken sword. Better go fix it. Alright. Batteries. There they are. You've collected a torch and some batteries. To load, the bat to load the batteries into the torch, open your inventory again. Hey, Klutz. Yeah, we just started, but I mean, we're we're in a tutorial at the moment, so I don't think you're missing anything important. This is just, uh, this is like for people who have never played a point-and-click adventure game before, which, of course, I have, but I decided to run the tutorial just to see what it's like. Now combine the torch with the batteries. Left-click on one object to select it, and then move it over to the other object. When both objects glow with a gold outline, then left-click to combine them. Yaw! Yeah. Well done! You've successfully used the batteries on the torch to power it up. Oh no. <laughs> and finally, you can use inventory items on hotspots in the environment. O open your inventory again. Left-click the lit torch to pick it up and move it out of the inventory. Align the pointer with the hotspot in the scene, and when the pointer changes to animating cogs, left click again to use a torch on the hotspot. That is a goat. I don't- I disapprove of this goat. Well done, you've successfully used an inventory item on a hotspot. Hey, and I got an achievement for completing the tutorial. Go me. You have now learned what you need to play the game. To display the main menu, hammer and spanner, hints, question mark, and achievements, gold cup icons, move the mouse pointer to the top of the screen. If you get stuck on a puzzle, remember that the hint section can help you progress. We hope that you enjoy the game. Good luck! Thank you. I already turned the hints off, actually, <laughs> in the options. Game settings, hints off. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to mess with before I start? Subtitles on, yes, good. I don't know what the difference between speech, text, modern, and classic is, but I guess I'll just leave it as modern. Speech weight off. Yep. Seems okay. Is the, uh, is my, is my, uh, uh, are my audio levels any better? Start new game. But the serpent was wiser than all the animals that were in paradise, and God cursed the serpent and called him devil. And he said, Behold, Adam has become like one of us, knowing evil from good. The Testimony of Truth, Gnostic Gospel, circa 100 AD. Battle not with monsters, lest you become a monster, and if you gaze into the abyss, the abyss, ga the abyss gazes also into you. Friedrich Nietzsche, and I missed the last bit of that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we'll see if the, uh, see what the dialogue's like. Oh. It is still 3D models, um, but it definitely looks more 2D. Yeah, wow, this is gorgeous. It definitely has more of the feel of the original, um, hand-drawn first and second games. Catalonia, Spain, 1937. The music is kind of reminiscent of the first couple games as well. Spanish Civil War, cool. Okay, thank you for the context. That's, that's, uh, that's important. <laughs> This has a very, like, mobile game look to it, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Ooh, who's this dapper gentleman? Broken Sword 5 is a cover-based shooter. <laughs> Plot twist. We must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take oh, look. This. It will always be your guide. A plot-important pendant. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting. The malediction. Death lagging super hard, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna die. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh. Too late. Go. No, Papa! 
Yeah, he's dead as hell. <laughs> Senor, in here. Search them. Cole Phelps? <laughs> no. Of course. Two days of retirement. <laughs> Paris, present day. Paris in the spring. Yeah. Passion, romance, l'amour. I was working in art insurance. We paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move. Oh, really? <laughs> hey. No, Monsieur, not la malédiction. Oh. oh. Stay back. Once again, Is Paris has shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. Dude, we actually knew anything about, right? The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. <laughs> I think only one of them is dead. I think that other guy is not dead. I think he just, like, passed out or something. Also, I think that guy who passed out uh, if he did indeed just pass out. I think he's the same guy. I think he was in Broken Sword 2. I think he was the um, the dude in the art museum who took my vase and threw it on the floor. George is aging backwards. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. He did look a little... Uh, let's see. Can I use the... Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's, let's mess with the... Controller. Can I use the controller at all? No, I guess not. Alright. <laughs> just Merlin. God, that would explain some things, wouldn't it? <laughs> just 90,000 for this one. The tag said 60 grand. Wow, nice work if you can get it. The alarm still worked on that painting. <laughs> I wondered why the stolen painting's alarm hadn't sounded. It would. <laughs> Just. Oh my god, we can skip dialogue in this game. <gasps> Amazing. The label said it was painted in 1932. The gallery wanted 80 grand for it. Hmm. A rare glimpse into the absent, addled mind of the artist. A snip at only 80 grand. <laughs> 60,000 for a sketch? Ouch! <laughs> Another alarm working as it should. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio. Painted by someone called L. Serp in 1937 and worth just 40 grand. Hmm. The stolen painting was worth less than the others. So why did the thief target it? <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm, ooh, wait. Okay. So if George is Merlin, does that make Nico? Um, I never know how to say her name, but she's the, uh, the woman who seduced Merlin and, like, and, locked, and um, trapped him in a cave. Nim Nimu Nimue Nim Nimui? I don't know how to say her name. It's N I M U E. Challenging and experimental, like the eighty five K price tag. Another working alarm. Was the alarm on the stolen painting the only one that wasn't working? <laughs> yeah, we got some uh, some uh, Ace Attorney vibes over here. <laughs> and hey, this was where the stolen painting had hung. George is a lawyer, so why that painting? And why? Can't 
came for me. The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. Hmm. It was a vibration detector pad. It was a vibration detector pad. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. Looked fine to me. That wasn't the reason the alarm didn't go off. It was a small door. I guessed the alarm circuitry was inside. It was a small red button. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. <laughs> I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. I pressed the... I pressed the... It was the speaker... Hmm. So, the alarm wasn't broken. I suspected foul play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, except for that was the first thing you do at a crime scene is touch everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like your your fire alarm. Someone just like hit the hit the mute button and never got back to it. Except fire alarms don't work like that. <laughs> mm. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. Hmm. Oh my god, it's a mirage. <laughs> what? <laughs> why is that the achievement name? All right. Uh Okay. The door was marked private. The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. It must have captured the whole robbery. <laughs> if I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. Yeah. Getting some uh, unpleasant flashbacks to the time bomb and Broken Sword 4. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon, Broken Sword 5. The cable for the camera ran into the room marked private. That bust was pretty impressive. I wondered who'd been the model. For the discerning connoisseur, a soupçon at 80,000. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, although usually that happens if you, if you look through the achievement list before you play the game. Not so much like the achievement itself when you get it, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes that does happen. Just with really a random achievement. <laughs> that would be funny. All I needed was a mere 65,000 and this little gem could be mine. 55,000. Huh, shame. Just outside my price range. 70 grand? Oh, cheap at half the price. Another working alarm. So the thief took the only painting his alarm had been sabotaged. But why that painting? Why that particular one? Yep, yeah, so you, this guy's breathing. You can see him moving. He's not dead. What's the... wait. Oh, okay. I thought that talk icon was like sticking its tongue out or something. But no. The murderer left a pizza box on the table. With fingerprints, I'm assuming. Was he wearing he wasn't wearing gloves or anything, was he? The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Pizza. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. Oh, yes. The part where he kills you. <laughs> God, I need to play Portal 2 again. I need to play the, the co-op for Portal 2. I have not done that yet. The killer made a lousy pizza guy. Inside the box was a mess. Mmm, <laughs> pizza. 
No one had noticed the pizza box fall onto the floor. <laughs> I decided to leave it alone. Really, George? You slob. The important thing is free pizza. I'd picked up a piece of pizza from the gallery floor. It could be useful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope so. <laughs> Poor guy. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. Did nobody, like, call the police or anything? Ambulance? Something? The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. The poster looked old. I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. George, uh, 200 year old popcorn eater Stobart. <laughs> or however the hell old that, that popcorn was. I don't know. <laughs> Spanish modernists certainly didn't come cheap. I could have bought a nice car for the price of that. I wondered how many paintings they'd sold at these prices. As they say, every artist was first an amateur. The priest was giving... Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can it's do? good name. Pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. <laughs> what? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. <laughs> and now, excuse me. One minute, I'd been planning dinner with Nico. The next, I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. Hmm? What is that? Oh, character gallery? Ah! Cool. Easygoing, warm-hearted, intrepid, George is boundlessly enthusiastic with an intense curiosity that's forever getting him into trouble. Not for him, a career in the family law firm. A vacation in Paris years ago turned into a love affair with the city and a roller coaster adventure with Nico. Oh. Didn't mean to do that. Photojournalist Nico is streetwise, sassy, shrewd. She doesn't suffer fools gladly, but she appreciates honesty and courage. And she's on the side of anyone who wants to fight corruption or make a stand for the little guy. Most of all, she likes anyone who can laugh in adversity, and that's George to a T. Father Simeon is no art critic, nor is he at, at Le Lazard Blue by accident. He has been drawn there by one of the paintings, La, La Maledicio, a painting which he believes to be the work of the devil. Simeon speaks in riddles and is clearly stressed. Is this elderly priest to be trusted, or is he just a crazed conspiracist? That's not a thing, like, what if character galleries spoil, <laughs> spoil plot points? Uh, yeah, let's check out this there guy. There was no mistaking this body. It was Hector Lane. Art critic extraordinaire. He and I had met before. It is the guy. He's not dead. See, he's moving. He's breathing. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guess he'd only fainted. Lane had fainted. I was gonna have to find a way to revive her. Am I gonna have to use the pizza? Lane was out cold. I'm gonna have to use the I pizza. I'm gonna need something to bring him around. <sighs> Even unconscious, Lane's body reacted to food. Lane was out cold. I was gonna need. Some hmm. It was going to take something stronger than pizza to wake Lane. I don't know. Good question. 
Okay, so. Pizza's not gonna do it. Hey, Zakito Alexander. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I guess I didn't notice at first, but I guess this place is called the La Lizard Blue. Blue Lizard. <laughs> right? Yeah. Pretty, uh, that's, that's a disapp disappointing, uh, puzzle solution. Yes, my son. Ooh. What did you mean when you said that a great evil had taken place? Your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What? Cool. Peter 5.8. The devil is all around, Mr. Stobart. Yeah, I do too. Looks very cool. Did Henri say anything before he died? He said, stop the car. I want to get in. Um, what does that mean? We may never know. What brought you to the exhibition, Father? The painting. Which one? La Maledictio, of course. The painting that was stolen? I had to confront the evil. I think there's something strange going on here. Yes, Mr. Stobart. <laughs> At last you see the truth. No, Father. I mean that the robbery looks like an inside job. The devil's work is always an inside job. <laughs> yeah, no, let's just not notify anybody <laughs> of anything that just happened. <laughs> yeah, just super goth. Just leave him there. A wire in the painting's alarm was deliberately cut. Cut by the devil himself, <laughs> perhaps. Well, as far as I know, sightings of guys with horns and tails have been a little down recently. You mock me, Mr. Stobart. But as you will discover, the devil likes to have the last laugh. Besides, I already told you that the devil walks as a roaring lion. <laughs> Could a roaring lion cut a wire, Mr. Stobart? <laughs> the code to get into the office? No. But you could always pray and ask for divine guidance. With respect, Father, I'm looking for a slightly quicker solution. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> the Devil's Scissors. That would be a good band name. I like it. What do you know about the man who painted La Maledictio? El Serp. He was a man playing with fire. The fire of eternal damnation. That's an art masterpiece. Yeah, it's a, it's an installation. <laughs> Performance art. Tell me about the stolen painting. Whoever gets close to it will burn in hell. All right. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about the the, the thief, right? He'll burn in hell. So. Would you like this piece of pizza? <laughs> A man has just died. No, thank you. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, look at that. Poor guy. A small purple nozzle was poking out of his pocket. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of bread. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. Gabriel Knight? <laughs> I still... My headcanon is that uh, the Broken Sword series and the Gabriel Knight series take place in the same, uh, same universe. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. Like just like the uh the the uh, the golf club and the um the uh the tissue. <laughs> Everybody gets gets to gets to look at my pizza. I always wondered who bought those white framed glasses. Now I knew. 
He definitely looked better. <laughs> I put the glasses back where they were. Best to leave the evidence the way I found it. No, oh, it doesn't look like I can. This wasn't the first time I'd looked into a dead man's eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, it's got There's toupee. nothing quite so lonely as a dead man's toupee. Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> Give him some dignity in death, I guess. There was no way anyone would have survived that. I didn't want Henri's blood on my hands. Stick your finger in a gunshot wound. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Hmm. Innocent enough until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. Can I... I decided to let Henri's toupee rest in peace. Can I open his eyes once I've closed them? Oh, that's creepy. Ew. <laughs> what do you think, guys? Should I... Uh, should I... Leave him, leave his, uh, his head the way it was, or, or, uh, or, um, close his eyes and fix his toupee and his glasses. I mean, I've already got my, my fingerprints all over him, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've already very much contaminated the crime scene. It's too late. <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> yeah, like maybe maybe the gunshot was like maybe it was like a prop gun or something. This is all this is all set up. Who knows? the gunshots. <laughs> How would I even do that? <laughs> okay, this is gross. I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to leave him the way he was. Although, again, I've already left my fingerprints all over him, so... A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I definitely needed to check out that office. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the cologne will probably revive uh, Lane here. Hey, wakey, wakey. Time to awaken the beast. What? <laughs> uh, uh, what was that? It smells like... like the 70s. <laughs> Where am I? You fainted. That doesn't answer my question. <laughs> Ooh, nail clippers. There was a pair of nail clippers on the floor. The nail clippers were monogrammed with the letters HL. Hector Lane. They must have fallen out of his pocket. Lane had the kind of looks that only a lifetime of fine dining can create. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. Really? Excuse me, Mr. Lane. Food. My nerves demand food. 
Well, all I got for you is this slice of cold pizza. That uh, had a gun on it, probably. <laughs> what state is you fainted in? <laughs> I found a slice of pizza. I ask for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. <laughs> oh, there's pineapple on this. <laughs> Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? Uh oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. I need another piece of pizza to deal with this. <laughs> Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course, the man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. <laughs> Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. <laughs> I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. I do too. Like, those were like a staple food of mine um, some years ago. Did you know the gallery owner? Of course. We work together on the exhibition. Oh, really? Henri provided the space. I was the creative powerhouse. How long had you known him? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. If Lane was involved with the gallery, mm. then he had to know the code to that door. Beautiful. Yeah, I kind of do too. Although I did just have a grilled cheese sandwich, so pizza after that is like that. That's I've had enough enough bread bread and cheese. <laughs> do you know anything about the stolen For now. painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. <laughs> Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. I believe uh, maledizio would translate to curse, so... So we're already halfway into the actually no we're we're all the way in into the uh the gate the title drop so because El Serp is clearly the serpent. So you curated the exhibition? What's it about? A brilliant retrospective. A dialectical window on European art's ongoing discourse with the unresolved psychoses of the nation state. Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. Save the keypad for last. Who painted the stolen painting? Therein lies a mystery. We only know his pseudonym, El Serp. He was a Catalan, a modernist. His works are symbolic, religious. French pizza, hmm. I wonder what that would involve. What can you tell me about the stolen painting? La Maledicio, a challenging piece. If you like a wide cast of obscure saints and fringe Christian symbolism, of course. Oh, I do. Not especially valuable, though. The thief won't get much for it on the black market. Obscure lore? I'm all over that. How about some more of this? I don't think so. As a cell volatile, it was acceptable. As a cologne, it would be barbaric. Oh, yeah, true. Are these your nail clippers? Of course. See, they're monogrammed with my initials. So, 
you help run this place, maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Hmm. I will spray some of this cologne on you until you <laughs> give me the code. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Hmm. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? Nail clippers. Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stolen painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri, no motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. Hmm. I hate to say this, Mr. Lane, but you're going to be the number one suspect for this murder. So you keep saying, Mr. Stobart. This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Mr. Lane, this robbery is not going to reflect well on you. As I said, I shall take my chances. You're not getting that door code. <laughs> yes. Pretty please. Ugh, keep that noxious potion away from me. I hate to say this. So hmm. Father? Yes, my son. Do you know anything else about El Serp? I've already told you everything I can. Is there anything else you can tell me about La Maledizia? I've said everything I care to on the subject. Hey, Father. How about a squirt? I think not. I did. I, yeah, I, I noticed early on that it is actually possible to skip dialogue in this game, and I'm like... Hell of fucking hallelujah! <laughs> Do you recognize these? Nail clippers? I'm not sure what your point is. I'm not either, to be honest. Uh, can I leave? Oh, I guess I can. Okay. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. Can I? I can save my game. 
Oh cool, there's an auto save. That's nice. From out here, you couldn't see the stolen painting. This robbery was definitely planned. I guess I could have, yeah. I just didn't bother to uh, to try because I wanted to actually explore in there. But yeah, I don't think there was anything stopping me from just walking outside. Let's just oh, where? The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. Well, no, I mean, there, there already was a tutorial <laughs> before then. Oh. <laughs> you gotta hand it to the French. They know how to take a leak in style. I thought, like, I was like, why is there a sign of a man peeing on the street? And then I went, oh. I guess because this thing is here. Is that really a thing in France? Do they have those? Just like corner, street corner urinals? Yeah, to be fair, uh, I think the the background for the, for the tutorial was the art gallery. So I think it's reasonable that you would equate the two. It's like a sketchy version of the art gallery. I've always been a sucker for Parisian stained glass. Yeah, and apparently it's called a pissoir. Team off boy, thank you for the follow. I oh crap, I and I just realized I don't have any of my um and even my notifications set up. But thank you for the follow anyway. Sorry for not having a little fireworks display or anything. <laughs> but I saw it on the activity feed. So, yay. The menu offered black coffee and a short list of soft drinks. Ooh. The Sacre Coeur Basilica. The highest point in Paris. Impressive. Neat. You, waiter man. The waiter wasn't exactly run off his feet. Oh, he's apparently a character. Excuse me. Which is? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh. You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur. And all art is property. Therefore, all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. What? <laughs> Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprise me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, she is inherently unknowable. <laughs> no wonder this guy's cafe was empty. <laughs> Mr. Deep Thoughts over here. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. <laughs> Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? <laughs> he spent little time at the cafe, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. Oh. Sensing some possible blackmail here. Hey, hello there, Demonomaniac. What do you know about Le Lizard Bleu? It's bourgeois, vacuous, and overpriced. Just like it's curator Lane. He's always in here, you know. Talking art to his latest fluzy. Fluzy. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. 
He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What a bastard. What sort of time? After midnight for sure. Mm. If you see him, give him this bill. And tell him to pay up next time. Retired early in my ass. The check was from last night. But Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Would you like a squirt of this? Are you suggesting I smell, monsieur? No, sorry. Do you recognize these? They are nail clippers. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. <laughs> Perhaps next time you come, I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not. <laughs> I mean, if I pay for it, I assume you will. But maybe that's too bold of an assumption to make. I don't know. It was my phone. Mankind's most treasured possession. <laughs> ah, Brett. The fragrance that dare not speak its name. Lane's nail clippers. The initials HL were engraved on them. Where do you get engraved nail clippers? Lane had run up quite a bill at the cafe. Yeah. <laughs> My dog has no nose. How does he smell? Awful. <laughs> What's on my phone? Oh, cool. I can... Who? Who's that? Is that my boss? Hello, Mr. Rickenbacker? Mr. Rickenbacker, there's been a problem. Oh, why does that surprise me? This better not involve the blue lizard. I'm afraid it does, sir. There's been a robbery. Oh, terrific. Only one painting was stolen, though. Well, what are you wasting time talking to me for? Find that painting, or find a way to avoid paying out. Two ways to keep your job, Sobart. I see. Uh, thank you, sir. The thief had a gun. He shot the gallery owner dead. We insured him too? No, sir. Well, that's one piece of good news. At least tell me you got some leads. Uh, yes, it is. It is 3D, uh, but it's doing a very good job of of looking like the um, the hand drawn 2D of the first two games. I'm pretty sure the security was sabotaged. The alarm was disabled for that one painting. So it was an inside job. Who else is at the gallery? There's a priest. Uh-huh. As my mother used to say, never trust a man on a cross. She should know she married one. There's a guy called Hector Lane. Lane? Why does that name sound familiar? He's an art critic. I think he's connected to the exhibition. Now, could it be him? Well, he's rude and ugly. It's <laughs> certainly possible. So squeeze him, so It's got nothing to do squeeze with it. Him till he squeals. If I was going to squeeze Lane, I needed longer arms than these. <laughs> find out who disabled the security system, then find that painting. And don't call back until you have. All right. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, as far as I know, this is the last one. Let's call Nico. See what she has to say. Nico wasn't answering her phone. No surprise. Uh, four was disappointing. <laughs> Four was definitely uh, the uh, the weakest game in the series. Instantly call back. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I had nothing new to tell Rickenbacker, and he wasn't really the chatty type. Okay. Yeah, the vods are all on YouTube. Although I still, I'm 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 a bit behind on um, organizing them all into playlists. So they're all just kind of. 
splattered all over the place, but uh, but yeah, they're there. So, Laney boy. How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. <laughs> I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? You lie! Take a look at this. Your lying mouthful of... What of it? Corn. It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30, to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. All right. You have me. The number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. So I wait. The, code. the police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What is his motive, though? What was that number again? Six. Four, two, no. God damn it, George. Everyone hold it right there. Damn it. Ooh, is this? It is! I it... am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad. Not that I guy, I hereby but... declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move. Especially <laughs> you on the floor. <laughs> Mo, I want a total it lockdown. Is nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. Moo from the first game. <laughs> Mustache guy. <laughs> yeah. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Moo. Our paths had crossed before. Yay! I play as Nico now. Woo! Your little purse icon, that's cute. My press card. It opened some doors, but not as many as I'd have liked. My smartphone. Possibly the journalist's most important tool. Oh good, she's upgraded to having a smartphone as opposed to that, like, the, the landline in her apartment. <laughs> Ronnie? Who's Ronnie? Ronnie? I'm at the exhibition over in Montmartre. You won't believe the scoop I've got. You're kidding me. That place is a dump. What could possibly have happened to make it exciting? A painting's been stolen, and the gallery owner's been shot. What? Okay, speak to anybody who saw what happened. Scope out the place. And call me as soon as you get a story. If you're quick, we can make the evening edition. Bye, Nicole. Hey, someone actually called her Nicole. This could be the scoop I've been waiting years for. How does she know what? She was there. She saw the uh, she saw the guy get shot, and then she and she ran out after the guy who did it. Hi, George. I'm outside the gallery. Inspector Mu is out here and he's not letting me in. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Gloria is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was dinged earlier. Looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery. Back 
That's right, she did. <laughs> she <laughs> secretly had the cell this whole time. <laughs> yeah, but that just meant that he like came over to her to her apartment in person and bugged her. <laughs> George's like that. It was an office. The room was full of strange trinkets. The pissoir was decorative and unpleasant. <laughs> Ah, le maître. I wasn't going to leave without comparing notes with Georges. Fair enough. The body was still in there. I had to get back inside. I like how her... I think, I think they have different... Uh, I think their footprint icons are different. I wasn't paying very close attention to George's, but I think they're different. I think because uh, Nico's show high heels, which is appropriate because that's what she's wearing. Sergeant Mu, we meet again. Ah, ah, Madame Cola, an unexpected pleasure. I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nabel. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu, that poor man. Inspector Navet, huh? That's a new face. And doesn't seem to be very, seem to be very, doesn't seem to be very good at his job from the little that we've seen of him so far. I witnessed the crime. I've got to get back in there. I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief. I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, Madame Cola. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I wonder what George's resume looks like. <laughs> he also must have like significant gaps in it, considering. The time he spends like gallivanting around the world. Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius, a man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the inspector's sweaty proclivities. <laughs> what? He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. Huh. That's actually a pretty good skill. <laughs> yeah, piss war is a, real f is a real word. But I'm still curious as to whether these things actually exist in France, if they, are, if they just have these things out on the street like this game and uh, uh i think broken sword 2 i think it was broken sword 2 that had them as well was it 2 or 3 i don't remember i really need to get into the gallery and speak to inspector nave tat tat he is not to be disturbed he is applying his famous scientific methods any moment now the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog tired and want to go home. It's a pissoir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is also uh, an important question. <laughs> like, I'm assuming it's basically like a urinal in there. But I don't know. I've never seen one. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nabe will be delighted. You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So I cannot go in without Inspector Nabe's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nabe's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. <laughs> what? No, he's a... Never mind. <laughs> this was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Stretch time. Okay. 
Good time it is. One moment. All right, that was some stretching. Oop. And I get my foot tangled in my headset cable. Ah. To keep people from peeing on the buildings. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. If that's a problem, then it's a good way to solve it. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Smith? been working for three days with no rest. Nabe is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very <laughs> thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah, that would do the trick for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last uh, incident. Did it involve peeing on a building? <laughs> I don't want to talk what? about it. Aye. All I can say is it was very unfortunate. I accidentally skipped I am on the dialogue. And I need to focus. Oh, I can't, I can't click it again. I want, I, I missed what she said. Damn it. Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madam. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. Thanks a lot, Sergeant Moo. You've been so helpful. 
<laughs> this is very Ace Attorney-ish. Sanicet or Sansinet. Hmm. Interesting. Madame. Yes. Bonjour, monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. No. Oh. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, madame. <laughs> Try me. Because I look at you and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> And the men with their grooming products and their shiny shoes and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for lattes, macchiatos, frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality. Fraternity. Vive la revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, two point and three six? <laughs> no, madame, no! <laughs> it was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple delitas. The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite talk and your pointy ears, are none of those things. How do you know? This is a cafe. Just by looking at me. Yes. To the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, he's like, oh, these people are asking me for, for coffee. How dare they? I work at a cafe. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you expect? You're cl you, he is clearly in the wrong job. He needs to be, like, I don't know, a college professor or something. <laughs> the menu offered black coffee and a small selection of other drinks. I think he accused me of being a, being a basic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to go to go here. I hope we do get to go there. We can't right now, but um as always, Paris looks beautiful. Yes, that'd be great. Monsieur Life is fleeting, madame. The sands of time are running through your fingers. Well, that may be, but... We know not what we want, and yet we are responsible for what we are. There's been a crime. That is terrible, madame. But you know what they say. No, but I think you're going to tell me. <laughs> Life begins on the other side of despair. C'est vrai, no? Well, I guess so. He was pushing me to the point of despair. During the riots, we battled the forces of oppression. Oh, really? That must have been terrifying. We? Oui. It was. Except that they made me stay behind the barricades with the other baristas. We made coffee by the litre to fuel the resistance. I've never brewed so much coffee. Of course, our brave heroes spent half their time going for a pee. But with our coffee inside them, they fought the running dogs all night long. None of this was helping me get past Sajamu. Au revoir. What, like, what, what is he talking about? <laughs> what fighting? Like, what, what, what fight? Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Perhaps you will walk that road with me. Au revoir. Okay. Uh, 
Excuse my breath, God. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was La Liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Also, what is wrong with almond croissants? Yeah, <laughs> it's happened before. <laughs> In, uh, I, I recall uh, in um, Dagger Man and Raw, flashing your press card actually got you places. Monsieur. Madame. Could we have a little chat? Anytime, Madame. Did you see anything happen at the gallery earlier? I saw you running after a pizza delivery guy. Somebody said he killed someone. That's true. He stole a painting and shot the gallery owner. Uh, how close we are to death. And yet how far from ever comprehending. Mm, well, right now I need to get back inside and figure out what happened. I applaud you, madame. To seek the truth is a worthy ambition. As a journalist, that is my duty. He's also one of those insufferable assholes who's like... Oh, if you if you put anything in your coffee other like, if you if you drink your coffee any way other than black, then you're a wussy. You know what? Fuck you. I'm gonna enjoy my coffee however the hell I want, and you don't get to say anything about it. Yeah, when in doubt, badge. Just show your flash your badge at everybody. The waiter didn't need to see my press card again. How about some coffee? For you, madame, of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment. Yeah, I mean, he basically came out and said he was. Here is your coffee. And I hate people like that. <laughs> Thank you, monsieur. Right? <laughs> I would do the same. <laughs> The coffee was hot and strong. I would like... I would like some cream in my coffee, and I would like some sugar in my coffee, and I would like you to shut up about it. <laughs> would you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. <laughs> yes, just... <laughs> Thank you, monsieur. I would also like some friggin' caramel sauce in my coffee and I want some whipped cream on top. Yeah. <laughs> Mustard and coffee. Aww. <laughs> I, I don't think I would go that far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> covered in beans. <laughs> I like my women like I like my coffee. Black strong and in a tiny cup. <laughs> I know, right? And it's like, it's like, it's like a, uh, I, I've seen it like presented as like, oh, it's a masculine thing. Like, I'm a man, therefore I don't like sweet. I don't like, I'm like the sweet in my coffee. Like, well, all right. I like things that taste good. <laughs> and I mean, if that's the way you like your coffee, then fine. That's great. But don't like, don't jump down my throat about liking it a different way. <laughs> yes. Covered in bees! <laughs> oh my croissant. <laughs> Make, like, obvious sounds of enjoyment, like lick your fingers, get crumbs everywhere. Mmm, the salmon croissant is so good! <laughs> It was upmarket coffee in downmarket plastic. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Bitter coffee for bitter men. Salut. Bonjour, madame. 
Oh. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is it was very unfortunate. I am on duty and I need to focus. Moo wouldn't be interested in my press tag. I think I already asked him about all these. I remembered something else about the crime. Then you should tell Inspector Nave immediately. So I can go inside then? No. <laughs> Do you want to see my photo of the thief? In the passeront pas. I don't know what that meant. You know, if you are tired, surely your duties are suffering. Madam, I am a consummate professional. I would never shirk my responsibilities. I will uh, stand here as if my life depended on it. Or my job. Oh, it's going to make me yawn. <laughs> yes, we are. Sergeant Mo, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic. Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little problem i'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt i'm tempted madam but uh, i cannot risk it uh, i am sorry so this incident it involved you some coffee and your little problem it is a tale of woe madam i'm all yes sergeant well since you seem quite understanding i shall elaborate Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the president himself. Nice. Uh, one day, en vacances, he went for a private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee pee. <laughs> when I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. Oh no! But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the president's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant just after the president's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, Sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the President himself. Well, the President's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. <laughs> yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious Republic. Your career. Mm. How you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mu, drink. She is? Wow, Nico. She is. Drink or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose it is drink. Bravo, Sergeant. Oh dear, oh dear, excuse me, madame, I must use the petit gendarme's room. Dang, that it coffee has gone straight through me. works fast. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, sergeant. <laughs> I distracted Mo. It was now or never. Yeah. Yeah, neuter your pet, damn it. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. Well, you won't <laughs> fool me so easily, madame. I shall question you later. Sure, you do that. Nico, am I glad to see you. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. <gasps> I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do.
Uh, once again, Nico must distract thing must distract people for George's benefit. <laughs> A CCTV camera watched over the room. Oh boy, big follows. Enjoy your ban. <laughs> Why do people keep making those bots? Like, I wonder, like, who falls for that? Where is the where is the profit in that? The bust was striking. I guess there are there's always a few people who will who will actually click on it. I couldn't use this painting to distract Inspector Nave. Not without getting into more trouble anyway. George was in pretty good shape. I haven't seen him in a while. Oh. I like this. But not enough to buy it. If it hadn't been for the body, I would have enjoyed looking at the paintings. Nice use of color. I like this. If it hadn't been for... The painting was La Maladette Seal by an artist named El Cerf in 1937. Nice use of color. It was the alarm for the painting that had been stolen. I'd never met the gallery owner before, but he sure didn't deserve this. I couldn't use this painting. There was a pizza box on the floor. Oh, okay, just pick up pizza box. Oh, I just put it back in the I wasn't looking closely. I didn't. I didn't notice that she. Just, she I thought she just picked it up and put her put it in her, in her inventory, but no, she put it on the table. Tomato stain. The tomato sauce had splattered onto the floorboards. Oh, look, it's blood. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> no, that's Hector Lane. At least now the place is a little tidier. Inspector Nave, I presume. According to Mu, he was a CSI star with a passion for blood spatter analysis. Father Simeon sat in the chair reciting his rosary. Drawing attention to myself would be a bad idea. It was clearly old, but still in good condition. The gallery was already a mess. I didn't feel like tearing the poster down. <laughs> nice price tag. I liked it. If it hadn't... I liked this. It was the first time I'd had the displeasure of meeting Lane. Are you Hector Lane, the art critic? Enchanté, madame. And which of the angels are you? I'm <laughs> Nico Kala, a reporter. Ah, a fallen angel then, my favorite sort. Well, I hate you already, although I already kind of did. What can you tell me about the painting that was taken? It was called La Maladie Seal, an unknown work that only recently surfaced. Who was the artist? A mysterious figure known only as El Serp. Some say he was a student of Picasso. He was good, but not great. And his true identity remains unknown. He doesn't have to move his mouth when he talks. Interesting. The manager. <laughs> yeah. What can you tell me about the theft? Oh, it was truly awful. What do you want to know? 
Have you spoken to Georges? The American? Yes. He promised to clear up any misunderstandings the police might have about my presence here. What can you tell me about Henri's involvement with the gallery? Dear Henri, a shining diamond in the ordure that is the modern art business. He owned the gallery. What will we do without him? Ordure is a good word. Tell me about the shooting, monsieur. Well, it all happened so fast. Take your time. What did you see? I can't be sure. Perhaps I could answer your questions over dinner. I'm sorry, monsieur. I'm on a tight deadline. Did you see the thief? No, I would have tackled him, but he was too quick for me. <laughs> did you know that the alarm had been sabotaged? No. How dreadful. I suppose that's why the alarm isn't ringing. Here's my press card. And there was I thinking you were too young and beautiful to be a reporter. Thanks for your help, Monsieur Lane. I wasn't going to get anything useful from Lane. Yeah, screw that guy. How about you, Priesty McPriesty Pants? Excuse me, Father. Priesty McPriest Pant Priest Face? Father Simeon, my child. Are you okay, Father? It's a terrible shock, but yes, I'm fine, thank you. Could I ask you some questions about the crime? What kind of questions? I'm a reporter for La Liberté. I suppose it cannot hurt. Please ask away. This is my press card. As I said, I work for La Liberté. Good. Be sure to warn your readers that this painting is evil. All right, I will go ahead and do that. Why did you come to the gallery today, Father? God brought me here. I saw the poster for the exhibition. I had to come. What do you mean? I knew there was great evil in La Maledictio. It was my duty to confront it. The painter was El Serp, the serpent, don't you see? Evil? So what were you planning on doing here today? I wanted to bear witness to anything that the devil would conjure. Well, I think it was a no-show, Father. Really? A man is dead, Miss Collard. I'd say his work here today is done. That wasn't going to help my story. Well, he's got a point. Did you see anything that might help identify the killer? The devil takes many forms, child. I didn't get a good enough look, I'm afraid. <laughs> Father Simeon. <laughs> anything would help. I'm sorry, my dear. My mind was elsewhere. Monkey priest. What do you know about Omni? An innocent victim, in so far as any of us are innocent. If he was peddling such blasphemous works as the El Serp painting, then who knows what other sins he was hiding. Father Simeon was making me feel guilty. Priests always did that to me. Well, what do you have to feel guilty about, Nico? Huh? Huh? What can you tell me about the painting? Grotesque and evil. How can a painting be evil? By killing all who come into contact with it. Does that mean we're next? Laugh not at the devil's play, Miss Collard. What is this, the ring? Do you know anything about the painter, El Serp? He was a purveyor of blasphemy, a servant of the Antichrist. How can you know that? It is clear from his work. Father Simeon was making a lot of assumptions. What do you think about that stain? Is that blood? I think it's just us. I wonder if there's a mop anywhere. We are facing death and divine retribution. This is no time for tidying up. Father Simeon wasn't making much sense. Uh, Thank you for your time, Father. But I counter with cleanliness. Had nothing useful to offer. Cleanliness is next to godliness, so I would think that now would be the perfect time to, to tidy up.
Yeah. It's uh it's not a subtle name. Let's talk to George first, then we'll talk to the inspector. Josh. Yeah, Nico. So why do you need to get into the office again? I'm pretty sure the robbery was an inside job, and I think the proof is in the office. So what's stopping you? Super cop over there. <laughs> What if I create a distraction? You do that, and I will let you have whatever I find. That's a deal, Josh. Somehow, I've had to get the inspector away from the office door. <laughs> well, even if he did remember the code, he can't, uh... He can't enter it without arousing suspicion, I guess. Inspector Nave. Do you have a moment? My time is of the essence. Be quick now. I suppose this is quite a complex case, Inspector. It is a robbery gone bad. Nothing more, nothing less. Surely there's a bit more to it than that. Please abstain from baseless conjecture, madame. The victim's body paints a simple picture, more reliable than any witness statement. Consider the impact of the bullet, and note the concomitant lack of blood. A casual homicide, nothing more. Don't you find it odd that the thief chose that one particular painting? Life is full of odd things, madame. Fingerless gloves, white dog poo-poo, nasal hair. <laughs> I prefer to concern myself with murder. Speaking of nasal hair, he's got quite a nose on him. Did you see the alarm was sabotage? I have interrogated the crime scene, madame. I am fully aware of the disabled security. I prefer biological evidence to be merely circumstantial. Body parts, blood, important things. Don't you think the disabled alarm is highly suspicious, though? The forensic team will be along shortly. Voice your concerns to them. Do not bother me with this circumstantial fliff-flaff. Fliff-flaff? <laughs> Why don't you check out the security camera footage? Madame, that is not my area of expertise. It is the body which concerns me. But the CCTV footage is evidence. It could help identify the killer. Correction, madame. It is but an indicator. The only true evidence is bodily fluid. Unless you know something I don't, then please leave me be. The only evidence Inspector <laughs> Nave seems to appreciate involved gore. I know a lot of things you don't, but you're not listening to, <laughs> to any of them. What do you think about the American, George? He is deeply suspicious. Yeah, you can see his nose better when he turns that way. Could you give me a statement, Inspector? Now is not the time, madame. <laughs> yeah, who put a hole in this body? Have you seen that stain on the floor by the door? What do you think it is? I don't have time to waste discussing domestic hygiene. Please, leave me to my work. Thanks, Inspector. I'll let you know if I remember anything else. Hmm. If I was going to distract Nave, I needed to unearth new evidence or concoct some. And the bloodier, the better. Hmm. The tomato sauce had splattered on the floor. Chewing gum. It was a blob of chewing gum, probably carried in on somebody's shoe. The stain was a real mess. No way was I going to clean that up with my bare hand. Hey George, you got any uh, tissues or underwear I could use to, to mop this up? I spread some of the sauce around with my shoe. It looked a little bit like a blood stain. 
but it still wasn't right. If I was going to distract the cop, I had to get rid of that gun. Hmm. I scraped up the chewing gum with my press card, hoping the inspector wouldn't notice. Gross. Now it's on my press card and in my purse. <laughs> Ew. The gum was well chewed and still sticky. I'd made a convincing blood stain, but was it art? The tomato sauce looked as close to blood as it was ever going to. <laughs> Floor food. <laughs> Inspector. Yes? Have you seen the stain on the floor over there? It looks like blood. Indeed. How very curious. I must investigate immediately, before one of these idiots steps in it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, hopefully at least we just distract him long enough for him to, like, just look at it. Maybe it is time to employ the machine. Okay, Josh. That should distract him for a while. Nice work, Nico. I'll let you know what I find in the office. Oh no, where did the American go? I was sure the inspector hadn't seen me slip away, but I needed to be quick because it wouldn't take him long. Yeah, because you're right. Like if he's if he's a blood splatter expert, it should take him like two seconds to realize. Hey, wait a second, this isn't blood. Frame containing pressed flowers. I didn't imagine Henri as a musician. Henri sure liked this clutter. It was an antiquated CCTV system. It was a pretty flamboyant looking clock. A pair of evil eyes stared from a partially covered poster. A pair of evil. It was a hookah pipe. Those things gave me a headache. Henri sure had his quirks. <laughs> what is the fact of permanence? Yeah, he's not gonna suddenly like look up and realize, oh hey, that what that guy who was standing here is gone. <laughs> Where could he have possibly gone? Did he just sink through the floor? The poster advertised a 1975 Stockholm music festival. Headlined by a group called the Hairy Lobsters. The calendar looked like a child's school project. Henri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Hmm. Poor guy hadn't quite made it to his big day. Maybe it wasn't his birthday. The telephone was an antique rotary model. The handset looked greasy. There was a crumpled letter in the wastebasket. Ooh, always good things in wastebaskets. In the trash can, I found a crumpled letter from Henri's credit card company, demanding immediate payment. It listed extravagant purchases from a variety of ladies' fashion stores. The address mm. indicated that Henri lived in the chic and expensive 16th arrondissement of Paris. I decided to put the letter back. Henri's financial problems weren't my business. But now I knew where he lived. Mm, well, now I'm thinking that he uh, orchestrated this theft to collect on the insurance money to pay off his debts. The desk was covered in junk. It was hard to tell if the lava lamp was retro or just plain old. The trinkets, the junk, the instrument. Henri was kind of a hippie at heart. Oh, that's cute. Henri had a model of a VW camper van painted in hippie colors. The engine capacity was displayed on the back, 1600 cc. Henri may have been a hippie, but a hippie with plenty of disposable income. The 
woman in the picture looked vaguely familiar. Henri's notice board was covered with all kinds of junk. Save the desk for now. It was a statue of Henri bearing almost everything. Statue a of him? placed figure protected his modesty. I mean, that's clearly David. The statue was jaunty, up close and personal. I could see that the fig leaf was hinged. Oh, dear. <laughs> the fig leaf had a small hinge on it. It looked like it could be lifted. <laughs> Thankfully, there was no one around to see me do this. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> I figured that would be the... It was a sturdy looking safe. Yeah. I wasn't going to open the safe without the keys. I was fairly sure that even Henri wouldn't be silly enough to keep it hidden in the office. I wasn't going to open the safe without... <laughs> the sofa had clearly taken some punishment over the years. <laughs> there is a safe. Yeah, I totally wasn't expecting uh, that to be where it, where it was. <laughs> but it uh, makes sense. The street was quiet. A naked lady stared at me seductively. Henri may have been a hippie, but a hippie with plenty of disposable income. It was a battered sofa. Yeah, like that's t that's totally the kind of thing that like, oh, you, you circle a date because it's the code for something. It still might be. It looked like Henri had saved the best booze for the back room. Also, that 1600 might be a code as well on the model bus. Yeah, so did I. You were not alone. It was an antiquated CCTV system. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Junk drawer. <laughs> uh, you're fired. <laughs> well played, Mr. Gel. <laughs> well played. <laughs> the CCTV system was ancient. Oh, there we go. It took individual shots and recorded them to tape. Passcode, okay. It looked okay. like I needed to enter a passcode to view the recording. Yep. That's where we need a code. Okay, hold on. Hmm. I needed to find a four-digit number. Let's look around a little bit more, because I haven't looked at this desk yet. There was a box of thumbtacks on the desk. The business card listed the gallery's details. Excuse me, those are push pins, not thumbtacks. Those are thumbtacks. <laughs> it was a decorative pen, probably a gift to Henri. Steal everything. It was a corroded lighter. It was liquid ink. <laughs> I had no idea they still sold this stuff. What <laughs> this giant playing card? It does look like a giant playing card, doesn't it? Ooh, that's a nice eraser. It was an eraser tron. I love those. The nice, uh, smooth white ones. The switch controlled the small desk lamp. It was a reel of fragile tape. It was the paper that Nico wrote for. Hmm. Nico lived for the day her story would be on the front cover. Why is that crossed out? <laughs> it was a standard drawer. I didn't like the idea of a pocket full of sharp pins. Oh, but but Guyver Threepwood says that nothing like a pocket full of nails to keep you on your toes. 
George clearly does not live as as dangerously as as Guybrush Threepwood does. I didn't need a business card. The pen could have been useful. Then again, it might have leaked all over my pocket. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> like, you know, like there's like the 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 pink erasers which are terrible and smudge the shit out of everything. And then there's the nice white ones that are wonderful. That, and they can also smudge the shit out of everything if you neglect them for too long. But but yeah, that's a good eraser. <laughs> I didn't feel the need to take Henri's eraser. Carrying an ink pot around inside my pocket would have been stupid. The ink would have stained my hands for days. The lighter was corroded and grimy. It would probably never work again. I decided to leave it. I didn't want to carry the tape around. I had a feeling I wasn't going to need it. I want to lift up this desk blotter. There's usually something hidden under a desk blotter. But I can't. And that's driving me nuts. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to love kneaded erasers as well. I don't, I don't like them as much anymore, but yeah. Used to love them. Pretty cool. They're fun to play with, if nothing else. <laughs> there was a document folder in the drawer. There was nothing else in the drawer. The document folder had a hairy lobster sticker on it. I had no idea what was inside. The folder looked interesting. This was very definitely tampering with evidence. It was the security installation note from the company that Henri had used. It was a completion of work notice from a company called Vera Security. They weren't the guys we'd recommended. Hmm. Henri had gone behind our backs to choose a different security outfit. Ooh. Uh, I'd never heard of Vera Security, but there was an address and phone number on the form. Hmm. Okay. The completion note from Vera Security. There was an address. There's a phone number. Can I call him? I can. Ooh, fancy. Hello, Vera Security. George Stobart here, Paris Mutual. Never heard of you. Really? Well, I'm surprised. Uh, we're leaders in our field in commercial insurance, and our brand recognition is. Do me a favor. Don't call back. The lady hung up. I was going to have to visit in person. That did not sound like a lady, but okay. Oh, man. Yeah, that is a good feeling. <laughs> I always liked getting, like, a, a brand new ream of binder paper. For some reason, that was, that was one of my favorite things. Okay, let's try some of these. Let's try a code here. So, was it 27th May? Omri had ringed 27th May and scrawled birthday. Okay, so that's either 2705 or 0527, depending on, uh, depending on, who, on, on where you're from. Guessing 2705. Hey! Bingo. I rewound the tape to before the robbery. This was the first interesting frame. It was Henri studying La Maledixia. He couldn't have had any idea what was about this to happen. This is totally Phoenix Wright. <laughs> and I'm digging it. Please point out on the videotape the, 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 the contradiction. The image was a little fuzzy, but in the center of the painting was what looked like a snake eating its own tail. I thought about what the priest said. There was definitely something unsettling about the picture. Was Henri studying that picture, or did he look worried? There was definitely more to this robbery than I first thought. Good old Ouroboros.
Nico and I were taking a look at La Maledicio just before the robbery. Funny. The painting didn't strike me as remarkable at the time. It's just odd. The most striking aspect of the painting was a snake eating its own tail. It seemed that whenever Nico stepped back into my life, so did trouble. There I was looking at the exhibition. And sometimes before then. <laughs> I mean, as I recall, in Broken Sword 4, we got into George, George got into trouble long before Nico ever showed up. A good view of La Maledicio. I can kind of see why Father Simeon thought it was evil. There was a certain presence about it. I imagine Nico feels the same way about George whenever George steps back into her life. It, uh, he, uh, trouble accompanies him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> the most striking aspect of the painting was a snake. Okay. The killer caught in the act. There was nothing really distinctive about him. Aside from the fact that he's clearly a member of Daft Punk. The CCTV had caught the killer in the act of lifting La Maledic seal from the wall. He knew exactly which painting to take. The most I wonder if like the painting will somehow change like in the middle of this. The moment it all went horribly wrong. The alarm should have sounded when the killer took the painting, but it had been sabotaged. I wondered who could have done that. Maybe Lane or even Henri himself. Or perhaps even Vera Security, who'd installed the system. Hmm. There was some writing on the front of his helmet, but I couldn't quite make it out. The most strike. Why hadn't Henri backed down when the thief pulled the gun? If that was me, I'd have done whatever the guy wanted. He was trying to stop him from stealing the painting. It's like, no, not that one. A burrito? What? That's that, that's the thief's arm. <laughs> the killer making his getaway. Ah, there is a clear view of his helmet. The alarm. Sh yeah. <laughs> Poor Henri. I can see how. He <laughs> it does kind of look like a burrito. <laughs> Whoever was wearing that helmet was going to pay for what he did. A logo on the front of his helmet read Waterloo Motors. That could be useful. Mm -hmm. Also, wow, I'm just noticing this, this, this rad vase on the side of the TV here. That's cool. And all these like Celtic knots and stuff. I love it. The painting was gone. And so was the thief. The alarm should have sounded. There I was, taking a look at the alarm box. Hopefully I didn't look too suspicious. Wait a second. Oh, okay. The alarm should have That was me, fiddling with the alarm. I hadn't thought about that when I was taking a look at the camera. <laughs> I should have made a face. Hmm, not my best angle. Yeah, Maneki Neko over here. <laughs> that was the last shot. I'd probably learned everything I could from the CCTV. That was the most recent image. All right. Oh, hello. Uh, Monsieur, sir. You have snuck in here, and now you are tampering with my evidence. <laughs> um. I'm just looking for the name of the caterer that cheese was to die for. <laughs> ah, to die for? Uh, to kill for. I put it to you, monsieur. Monsieur Stobart. George Stobart. I put it to, to you that you came here in search of cheese and killed the owner in a fromage-induced <laughs> frenzy. 
Well, no. You caught I'm me. I'm from Paris Mutual. We insured the exhibition. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yes, really. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Time will tell, monsieur. My evidence. Truth will out, inspector. <laughs> who dares wins, monsieur Sobat. <laughs> he who laughs last laughs loudest, inspector Nave. The guy was seriously nuts. And May who's... I remind you, monsieur, that a serious crime has been committed. I am going to have to ask you to return to the gallery. Of course. But I do need to ask you a few questions. D'accord. But remember, anything you say can be used against you, Monsieur Stobart. <laughs> okay, I'll bear that in mind. This guy was clearly nuts, but you're the guy who's having a proverb argument with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like... Like, who's, who's more nuts? The, the, the nutcase or the nutcase who... who like, stooped his level. Uh, okay, I guess I do have to ask him questions. No, I need to stop. Do you know anything about a company called Vera Security? No, I have never heard of them. Now, I must get on with my investigation. It's very likely that the security camera holds a clue to the killer's identity. Monsieur, I am a professional, and you... Uh, an amateur. So, leave the investigating to me, huh? Pal? Monsieur, you are American, no? Yeah, California born and bred. I thought he said it was course. Idaho. I think perhaps you are wanting to be like that Starsky and Butch, monsieur. No? Rolling around on top of fast cars with beautiful ladies, firing <laughs> your gun. <laughs> Interesting idea, Inspector, but... Not really my style. Oh, no, he did say he was from Oakland, didn't Indeed. he? Indeed. Well, let me tell you something, monsieur. You are my prime suspect. You may go now, but I will need to speak with you again. I wasn't done talking to you. But okay, fine. I think you went I to had school some valuable leads. in Idaho, actually. But before following up on them, I had important business to attend to. Hey, Nico, you want to grab a quick cup of coffee? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I've sworn off fast cars I am and. I'm pleased to announce that I have finished my preliminary investigation. And firing guns. This is now an official crime scene, and you must all go. I shall be questioning all of you again in the coming days. Nobody is to leave the country, particularly you. Monsieur Stobart. Monsieur Lane will stay behind to help secure the premises. Moo! Moo! Yes, Inspector. Let them out. Right away, sir. Yeah. Talk to randos, critique door frames, and slay the occasional dragon. Me. Nice work in there, Nico. Whatever you did, it worked. I just need a tiny distraction. A nave bought it. I think nave would buy anything if it had blood on it. <laughs> <laughs> also, an almond croissant, please. <laughs> you know, this whole setup, the theft, the murder, it just doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Ah, I want to stop. I I need to I need to get out of this conversation, but I can't without actually going through it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like some almond croissants and lots of cream and sugar, please. Like I said, I think it was an inside job. Go on. Someone disabled the alarm, but on just one painting. Let me guess. La malediction. Exactly. And I aim to find out who did it. The CCTV picked up an image of the thief. His helmet had the words Waterloo Motors written across it. Interesting. I think I got a couple of good shots of him, too. But I need to take a better look at them at home. Great. Let me know what you find.
Well, the priest thinks La Maledizio is evil. Shaw, she's just crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. But there's something strange going on. I found the address of the security company Henri employed. It was not the one that I recommended. Good luck with your investigations. Well, I guess I should go. This story won't write itself. And Josh? Yeah? It's good to see you again. Aww. Great to see you too, Nico. Sp I watched her walk away. The sound of traffic, the sun shining, a crime to solve. And Nico, back in my life. Thank you for not making a joke about her ass. Also, that sign at the cafe said, Chef Special Goat Cheese. Uh, okay, can I... I can save here. Good. Perfect. We'll save there, and then we will stop for the night. And I will pick this up next week. I am digging this game so far. It's very... It's a very nice, like, kind of return to... To, like, the, the look and feel of the, um... Of the first two games. Does the chef make the cheese? Is the chef a goat? <laughs> oh god, is the chef that goat? <laughs> Let's talk past each other again real soon. Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll end there. Yeah, and it's like, it. I, I like, it's, it's kind of, uh... It, it, fe it feels like a nice, like, fresh new, um look at the at the series while also being a a return to its uh to its origins uh what year was this released i believe 2014 let me see 2013 i was close so yeah only about uh Wait, I think it was it was December, so yeah, like little little j just a little bit over over seven years old. Um, yeah, so not not that old. Uh, oops, I lost my. There it is. Okay. All right. So yeah, this was fun. Um, looking forward to more next week, and we'll be going back to Alan Wake's American Nightmare tomorrow. Looking forward to more of that. I'm digging that game too. And. Uh, of course, rest it here on Wednesday for the endless, endless mode playthrough. <laughs> Let's see. Who is streaming something good? Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, we got some, uh, we got some God Hand again. Noita, that's, I'm curious about that game. I think I gotta go for God Hand. Mr. Radon. Some God Hand goodness. Have fun with that. Um, yeah, thank you for coming, everybody. I um, hope you are enjoying this game so far. Yeah, I am. So yeah, have a good one. Take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Ah. <sighs> Oh, I'm already, I'm already kind of feeling, like the, 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 the grumpiness of the f of that was left in me by the fourth game washing away. <laughs> it's a, it's a good feeling. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. Night, everyone.